and whenever you're ready. So hi everyone, my research project is about investigating the correlation between media misrepresentation and global HDI values, and I'll talk about what HDI is. So as for my project ideation, which I quickly wanted to touch on, I really just recognized that there was this global need for improving community evaluations throughout countries, considering that they are pretty nuanced in like its community development, its governance, and its um, overall structure. So this could really be um, defined by three different factors, which is resource allocation, specificity, and inclusivity, considering that all nations do have different demographics that we must accommodate our resources to. This is also based off of previous sociological research studies that I've also looked into in the past, which identified um, different cultural groups' access to different identity-specific resources, and I also wanted to intersect this with guidelines that are already established by the United Nations, considering that they have done substantial work in this field. So I wanted to go over the dimensions of HDI, which stands for the Human Development Index. And I basically categorize this into longevity, education, and the GNI per capita, which is simply the average income per person of working age. So for longevity, this is defined by the average life expectancy, which can easily be transferred over to the healthcare system. Education is defined as, um, as I use expected years of schooling for that population, which I obviously correlated over to the educational system. And GNI per capita is analogous to um, the general workforce, and below is just how um, HDI is statistically calculated. So as for our media connections, these are really how we could translate the impacts of HDI over to the media, or how um, like media kind of like rubs off on HDI. So first off, we have stereotypes and partiality in media, and this is often due to a lot of generalizations that media often makes, and the practice of emotionalism in which authors tend to use views that kind of sway towards their own personal opinion rather than taking an objective standpoint. And this information circulates obviously on a wide scale. For implicit biases, um, again, media may overgeneralize marginalized populations because they think it might be an easier way um, for the reader to understand it, even though this is not the case. And lastly, we have these internalized beliefs, which kind of overlap with the first two that I just mentioned. And this often happens with a concept called ethnocentrism, which is where the predominant cultural group may think that they're superior to a minority group. So this brings me over to the research question, what correlation exists between global media misrepresentation and the country's human development index, or HDI? And how exactly does this correlation hint at its community progress? So as for my methodology, I made use of three different methods, the first one being content analysis. So for this, I selected different types of media that were already publicly accessible. So um, this could be articles and different case studies, which I'll get on to the next step, that misrepresent a particular group. So for misrepresentation, I really just generally define this as the type of bias that was present in that article. And with this content, I assigned it to different codes and themes. Um, second, I use case studies. So again, these were publicly ac accessible online, where I made qualitative observations from past accounts relevant to the three factors of HDI. Um, this was very similar to purpose of sampling if I were to actually interview people and select them based off of factors that I was specifically looking for in this research study. And lastly, I used statistical methods to kind of see the quantitative relationship between these different variables. So this is broadly misrepresentation in media um, versus a specific HDI dimension. So as for my criteria, criteria for selecting these case studies, I had three specific factors that I was really looking for, but I did want to make it as open as possible. So the year should be within the same um, time period as the chosen media that was published, so um, that goes on in, in a later step. For the context, it should recount um, a specific yet generalizable um, description of like a specific factor of HDI, whether this is healthcare, education, or the workspace. And the person that the account is about must mention their culture in some way or their identity as it relates to their specific experience that they had. And lastly, I wanted these experiences to kind of like match national trends just to make sure that they were easily verifiable and they did align with what was happening in that specific country or like society at that time. Um, or it should match with similar trends and statistics at that general time period that should have like a close correlation with what was being discussed in that um, article or case study. So the first case study I'll go over is um, the case of Dr. Angela Anderson, which, um, who actually experienced great medical neglect. So what happened with her is um, she actually um, identifies as part of a minority group and she was delayed diagnosed, um, delayed a proper diagnosis by her physician. So even though she was exhibiting different symptoms, um, these symptoms were not properly um, detected and attributed to the proper um, diagnosis or condition. So she also claimed to she also claimed that she was given a much larger dose of medication than necessary, which obviously induces very negative effects on her, um, like health. And this case really just underscored those disparities in healthcare administration for minorities versus a majority group in that society. 
So as for my second case study, we're going um, into the Falcon Foundry Company. So this company was actually involved in a lawsuit a few years ago because of their reported um, harassment towards their black and Hispanic workers at that company. And it was generally seen that their minority employees tended to receive much more intense disciplinary treatments compared to white employees in which if they ever had like a disciplinary um, action taken against them, like it wasn't really like taken seriously. And for my last case study, this is a bit more broad, but it deals with the educational aspect in different countries. And it deals with different services that they offered um, in response to different like minority groups um, and their needs. So this discussed multiple new services implemented in global universities in response to specifically gender gaps. And I, um, with, this, with this case study, wanted to look more into the specific causes and the existing demand behind its launch specifically. And again, as I said, it discussed multiple countries' efforts. So as for the analysis for the cultural themes, I really just categorized this into one, a general lack of awareness towards how a cultural group may function and their different like values and the ideals that, that, that they really identify with. Second is service gaps, so um, like were there any existing disparities in what um, a specific group may have wanted versus what they actually um, received in terms of treatment and um, their background, really just like acknowledging their cultural identity and, co and accommodating the resources and services to them. So as for the lack of awareness, I commonly saw that, there, that many providers um, often have little to no prior training on cultural sensitivity and cultural competence, whether this deals with that cultural groups um, like values or even linguistics, like the specific language that they may speak. Um, there were also many implicit biases that providers had when approaching different groups, and although these providers were not aware of this initially, it did impact their treatment to a substantial um, extent. So as for service gaps, I commonly saw that there was a very evident lack of the proper resource that, resources that accommodated the demographics of a given community. And this doesn't come as any surprise because many communities do differ in how resources are being administered and even just the general allocation and distribution. Um, along with that, we also had very big under-representation in the media or omission, which leaves out crucial values that may be associated with a specific um, ethnic, racial, or cultural group. For the background, um, many of these articles also um, reference stereotypes that were very common in media that related to these, uh, that were related to these racial and cultural groups, and just very broadly, it, they also did not consider that person's full background when administering treatment. So collectively, um, these were all the themes that were just characterized by these different case studies. So I wanted to talk about how I selected various media that I would also be using in more of like the quantitative aspects of my research. So I have four different criteria here. Firstly is the year, so similar to how I chose the case studies. Um, the year must be fairly recent because I wanted to take account of more like relevant um, and like timely events, so 2019 and beyond. And the context should be a major relevant societal event. So this is commonly taking place in like humanitarian crises, um, human rights, workforces, and other movements. The platform should obviously have a big global audience and should have a high viewership. As for bias and misrepresentation, I didn't really point out like a specific type of bias because um, it's commonly seen in the media that they all tend to exhibit negative effects on what exactly, what exactly they're representing. But I just knew that I wanted to really use that bias and misrepresentation to kind of point out the different social dynamics and treatment in these public systems. So these were the three media that I selected. And the first one is called um, the Comprehensive Timeline of China's COVID-19 Lies. So as for the bias that was exhibited in this article, it, I noticed that it, it contained a lot of um, various phrases about um, like Asian individuals and their contributions um, on society because of the COVID-19 pandemic. And a lot of these phrases did tend to have very um, negative connotations and often portray them in an, um, a very like um, negative light. And these reports were actually not entirely like precise and accurate because this article actually used more of like secondary sources rather than primary sources and actually getting at like the true objective side of um, what they were trying to cover. So the second um, media that I have here is Israelis kill more than 50 Palestinians in Gaza protests. So it was actually stated that um, these very like violent descriptions that were featured throughout the article conflicted with past statements of these protests actually being peaceful. So there was a lot of like inconsistencies and like incongruencies in how the event was actually portrayed. And there was a lot of criticism that um, really was just sparked because of this event. And because of this blame, it was placed on certain groups and different nations, which is obviously a very um, detrimental effect of this misrepresentation. And lastly, it omitted a lot of details about the reality of this environment, as I just stated. My third media that I have here is Venezuela is on the verge of a massive humanitarian and economic collapse. 
And this, again, received a lot of criticism because it argued that 93% of these sources that reported this specific topic failed to actually discuss the country's full socialist history. And this was also attributed to a type of spin bias, which only provided one interpretation of the national event rather than taking a more comprehensive and inclusive perspective. So I was going to take um, these case studies and these different articles and kind of tie this over to the specific HDI measures um, of a country. So this was really just like my selection process and how I decided to categorize these. So as for the criteria, um, I thought it was most feasible to select three different countries for each category of HDI. So as you can see here on the left, I categorized these into low HDI, medium HDI, and high HDI as indicated by their specific values. So choosing these three different countries um, for each category, I wanted them to kind of be like most representative of that category that they were in. And I thought this would be most effective to choose from a randomized sample, um, just so it could fully be representative of that fact. And in order to like further um, be representative of that, I wanted each country that I was selecting from to have a cultural diversity index of 0.25 or higher. So that really um, helped in narrowing down the sample to a more like usable and like sensible um, sample. So if a certain country didn't actually have like that like sufficient media or wasn't like represented too well, just in the global media, that could be evaluated in depth, I chose another country. So this is just like a spreadsheet that was actually like put together by like the United Nations. Um, and again, like this is publicly accessible online. And it sorted every um, country into like very high human development, a medium, a low, et cetera. And again, as you can see by the columns, it's categorized into HDI, um, life expectancy at birth, which again, like I translated over to the healthcare system. Um, expected years of schooling for education, um, GNI per capita for the workforce and like the economy and so on. So these are just the common characteristics between nations. So um, again, like highlighted in green, or as you can just see at the top of the slide, the, um, the three countries that I chose for each category are um, featured here. So as for the countries with low HDI, we can see um, in the healthcare, education, and um, workforce, um, like characteristics and different statements, we can see that they often experience a very big lack of sufficient financing due, due to various conflicts within that nation. There's also a lot of exclusion in systems like their um, um, education and even like healthcare, and there's not many like different providers that can actually serve the um, population fully. Um, as for the medium HDI here, so the middle column, we can see that the healthcare system as well as the education systems are fairly different from each other. But as for the workforce, um, the primary sectors um, are again like um, like informal and focus more on like agricultural um, and indus industrial aspects, kind of similar to um, the category with low HDI. So with the um, column that represents high HDI, we can see that there is a very big difference between how their healthcare, education, and workforce systems are set up. So as you can see um, on the right column, these countries are much more developed, so I thought it would be interesting to kind of see the different um, contrast between each of these categories' results. So these are just some of the like quantitative scores that I really attributed to the different countries and how they would like necessarily like be affected by that specific like articles like representation and how they portray those different groups. So again, like these scores were assigned based on a specific background or that existing background of that country. So again, um, that makes it very nuanced. And I tried to consider as much of that country's um, present social dynamics, public systems, and cultural diversity as much as possible. So I rated these on a scale from one to five. So um, as it ascends, um, it starts from no effect to minimal or slight effect to moderate, um, considerable, and then a significant and lasting effect. And I tried to include some side notes to kind of guide um, like the different um, categories and really just like make that division if I was ever like stuck with two them. So these are just like a little like feature of like how um, my data looked and how I sorted them out into the spreadsheet. So the leftmost column for these general tables was just like the country that was listed and this was also followed by their overall HDI value as well as, as that um, specific index, whether that be um, healthcare, um, education, or their economic index. And then um, for the um, columns highlighted in yellow that really just pointed out like that individualized score that I gave them based on that criteria that I already set in place. So with this, I wanted to conduct a graph analysis where I would quantitative, quantitatively evaluate how media really just like corresponds with that um, specific country's like social dynamics and the preconceived notions based on the media that I selected as well as that country's specific like background. So this I was really guided by the following factors, such as the amount of bias that was present, 
um, the potential of that country to spread misinformation, like were their policies set in place, like are there sufficient um, guidelines, as well as the believability of the media based on different like historical accounts and what has happened with like different trends in the past. And um, another like sub question, I guess you could say, that was posed here is, um, are certain countries' HDI values less prone to the effects of media misrepresentation in their society? So really just looking at like things like the correlation coefficient, like the strength of these trend lines would really help me in kind of like solidifying the results for this section. So as you can see here for article one, um, it showed like pretty consistent results in that for the three different like indices, um, it was a very like weak correlation. Um, it kind of was a mix between a positive correlation as well as a negative correlation, but this was also going to be supported by what we saw in, or what we're going to see in article two and three to see if um, these trends were consistent throughout for like a specific index, whether that's healthcare, um, education, or economic. So as for article two, um, we kind of see similar results with only healthcare in that it's kind of like similar, or it's like, around like the zero mark, like it's not really much of like a significant correlation, if at all. But for um, the second and the third graph, you can see that there is like a pretty, like more noticeable um, negative correlation between the, the specific index as well as the individualized score. So you can see that the higher the index is, which commonly corresponds with um, that country having a higher HDI, the lower the score is, which means that it kind of has like less of an effect on that specific country. And in Article three here, we can see the same results for the second and third graph, but the only difference is that for the healthcare index, there were a lot more um, changes with the correlation being more strong and more negative. So these are just a summary again of the observed relationships. We can see that for the correlation coefficient, they all share common qualities in being a fairly weak um, negative correlation. And um, for healthcare only, we can see that there were less consistent results between the graphs. So I wanted to talk briefly about the limitations here. So first, we have a lack of a cause and effect relationship, obviously, because this was a correlational study. So we couldn't really account for a lot of like those possible factors and the confounding variables that might have been present in the study, because again, there isn't a concrete um, relationship between media and HDI. We're just seeing if there are, if there may be like some mediums in play here. So secondly, we have um, intricate differences between nations. So this can be like various movements and community structures and governments that can actually influence the country's individual standing. So even though I took a randomized sample, it may not actually be that representative. And lastly, we have that there are no um, direct factors revealed, which I kind of like hinted at with the lack of a cause and effect relationship. So again, these are just some of the paired conclusions here that take into um, account like healthcare, um, because a lot of providers generally had like a big lack of awareness, which resulted in a lot of losses um, in terms of like their finances. Um, for education, we can see that even though there are a lot of policies in these countries to kind of equalize the field and a lot of movements are taking um, place, minorities are still at a really big disadvantage. And for things like um, the um, economic sector, um, a lot of these negative images of certain groups kind of discourage employees from recruiting individuals as an implication here. And a lot of job seekers thought that their cultural identities were shared with them. So again, these are more of the implications which include more effective community and national evaluations, which importantly is individualized to each area, much better resource allocation, which in turn can also increase the effects or the awareness of the effects of media misrepresentation on groups, as well as major factors that impact specific public services. So these are my sources. All right. Thank you. So we're gonna have some questions from our panelists, whoever wants to go first. All right, that was a lot. Thank you very much. You have to stop. You know, there's so many things to talk about. As far as you seeing your, your research, and what you got from the research, how can that then be turned around? What kind of real world implications or consequences um, do, you, do you see related to your findings, like influences on others' behavior, the decision-making process, you know, or different discoveries, you know, in these societies? Yeah, so I definitely think that a lot of the research I've found in its findings can be implemented on a national scale because um, it kind of, like, implied that, like, media, media misrepresentation does have, like, a pretty slight effect on HDI, which is, of course, characterized by a lot of its national systems taking into account, like, education, um, healthcare, and the workforce. So countries can be encouraged to kind of like use this information to put in place like the proper policies in order to lessen those effects of like um, negative representation and in turn that can also affect like the country's social dynamics as well and how they
they can properly like attend to like different patients and individuals and making sure that they actually get like the proper treatment that they deserve like without like, these implicit biases or like stereotypes in place. Great, thank you. Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, it was very interesting the information that you presented um, and just, you know, listening to everything that you were saying, I was wondering what was an obstacle or a challenge that you had um, when you were doing your research method and how did you overcome it? What, what did you do to address it? Yeah, so I'd say like a pretty major obstacle that I faced was trying to, um, I guess like collect like different like case studies, articles, and like different media, as well as like selecting the countries that would really just make sure that my results were fully representative of that population. And I'd say that this is pretty difficult just because like a lot of these countries, even though they are categorized into similar HDI groups, which means that that kind of hints at them having similar characteristics. A lot of them, as I mentioned like multiple times throughout the presentation, were very nuanced in like their community structures, like their governance, um, the policies that were set in place. So again, like this was probably like one of the biggest barriers that I had to overcome. But I guess like I tried to tackle this by like establishing like different like criteria for like the case studies that I selected, um, the media that I selected. I'm just trying to make sure that again like it tried to like target and like um, like represent whatever groups I was trying to like analyze like as much as possible. So yeah, criteria really helped with that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, which of your sources was the most influential? And in what way is the influence apparent in your final conclusion? Yeah, so I'd say like a really substantial source that I really referred to um, when guiding my research, it was actually, like I don't remember the specific name of it, but um, it briefly touched upon like, like the, it was like a causal analysis between like how um, medical information was represented in like the articles, like different headlines, um, different headers, and like the content overall, versus the actual um, medical information and findings that the scientists like um, had to the side, had it um, to the side when they were like implementing it into the article, and the results of that study um, actually found that there was a really big discrepancy between how the headlines featured different medical information versus the actual scientists' like findings. So I guess that that really influenced my study because it kind of like chose like my overall idea that you know like there was like a pretty big like correlation or at least like a possible like causation as well between um, media misrepresentation, um, social dynamics, as well as like the ultimate like impact on HDI. So yeah, the article really just helped shape my findings and like the implication of, implications that I was trying to get at here. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from the panelists at all? I'm gonna ask a chicken and egg question. Like what came first, the chicken or the egg? A HDI and media misrepresentation. You approach it from the from the angle like you're you're looking at the correlation, media misrepresentation, HDI. What kind of correlation is there in the reverse, in, in a sense? Like, and I don't know. You may have covered this, but uh, you know, but I, but I didn't I didn't quite catch it. But like, you know, so your different HDIs. How much was it more likely that a, that a company, that a country, sorry, a nation with a, with a higher HDI or lower HDI would be misrepresented in the media? Mm -hmm. yeah, so I think I understood your question. So based off of what I interpreted from that, um, I'd say that like countries with like a generally higher HDI tended to like combat like the effects of media misrepresentation better, so they weren't really as affected by it. Hence, like the negative correlation. But obviously, like this, um, there was there still is like a lot of like subjectivity to this, and a lot of like again like different nuances in these different countries. So I can't really say that that is like a very conclusive result if we're talking about like a cause and effect relationship, but that is like a pretty general like correlation that I can make from that. Okay, excellent, thank you. Can I ask another one? Of course. Um, <laughs> when you selected your media, you have your three your three articles. Um, so you told us the one article was on China, COVID-19, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, the Venezuelan, uh, you know, possible, you know, socioeconomic issues. Um, how did you choose, did, did you take into account where those articles were published and like what the kind of, um, the slant or, you know, I mean like the, the kind of political ideology behind those articles when, you know, when you chose them? Yeah, so I mean, as for like different like types of like biases, like I didn't really look for like a specific like stance per se, but I just wanted to make sure that there was some type of like bias involved. and. I guess like as for the selection process, I guess there probably was like a more effective way to go about it, but um, 
considering that like I guess like search results and like the different like databases that I could have looked at kind of like differ from time to time. So I really just had to make use of like the resources that were presented like at that moment, like for these different articles. Oh uh, yeah, and you're one person do it. I mean, this is the kind of thing that you know. 200 people work on oh, yeah. <laughs> for, for like several years, you know, so I mean, it's very impressive what you what you got. And, and obviously there are limitations, you know, it's right, a yeah, complicated yeah. <laughs> topic to be sure. So thank you very much. All right, thank you Appreciate so much. It. Any questions from the audience? All right, thank you.